By supporting our channel you support legal content on YouTube. Subscribe, click the bell and leave a like. We wish you a pleasant viewing. A curtain of mist cloaks the jungle, almost obscuring the entire scene from onlooking eyes that watch from the branches. This forest of clouds is an ever-changing scenario, at once permanent yet enigmatic, a place suspended between moisture and sunlight, maintaining an uncertain pulse. To survive in this very peculiar ecosystem, its inhabitants must be adapted to the reduced visibility and light and to colder temperatures. The fauna here is engaged in a game of hide-and-seek, whether looking for food, pursuing or escaping in the hunt, or reproducing, always under the cover of clouds. The longest chain of mountains in the world, measuring more than 7,000 kilometers, extends from Patagonia to Venezuela. Nearby to the north, the Central American Andes share similar ecological characteristics. The tropical cloud forests of the Americas are intrinsically linked to the mountain ranges of the continent, and the Andes is first among equals. However, their ecological characteristics, in terms of botany and fauna, extend even further to the north, through the mountains and volcanoes that form the American Cordillera, that runs like a vertebral column through all the countries of this territory. They share conditions that allow cloud jungles to thrive. Costa Rica is especially important for this kind of habitat. What are common to both the distant lands of South America and this region are the clouds and mists. The tropical forests that grow in mountainous regions have their own specific ecological characteristics. They are mysterious woodlands. Visibility is often very limited, and thus uncertainty prevails, and it is easy to attack or hide. so it's essential to go as unnoticed as possible. The clouds that are an almost permanent feature of these forests reduce solar radiation, but at the same time counter the lack of moisture of the tropical regions. The cloudy jungles are therefore a fresh and wet paradise. But conditions in these steamy jungles vary subtly depending on altitude. The southern two-toed sloth favors elevated areas of forests that flourish among the clouds at an altitude of 3,000 meters. 
Its long, thick, wavy fur is essential for keeping it warm and dry in the jungle of clouds. The all but imperceptible slowness of this curious mammal's movements are an adaptation to its very low calorie diet, which consists almost entirely of leaves. The sloth's metabolism functions at half the speed of other mammals of a similar size, and unlike most mammals, its body temperature varies throughout the day according to ambient temperatures which can fluctuate from 24 to 33 degrees Celsius. This ability to control body temperature with relation to the environment is an essential energy-saving adaptation. It also helps the sloth avoid other problems. Moving so slowly helps them go unnoticed by the jungle's most feared hunters. This forest of clouds and mist is the home of other, more active and fast-moving animals, such as white-headed capuchin monkeys. The capuchins live in and move around the aerial garden of the branches. A large part of their daily activity consists of searching their territory for food, which they do at breathtaking speeds. These medium-sized monkeys may cover more than three kilometers a day, traveling through the trees to look for food. The trees here are not as tall as those of jungles in low-lying areas. Their trunks are thinner and are twisted, and their leaves are smaller and very tough. In the cloudy jungle, epiphytic plants, which unlike parasitic plants use their hosts only for support, are very common, swathing everything with a luxuriant upholstery. Apart from lichens and ferns, in Costa Rica alone there are known to be more than 1,500 species of orchids, and more than 200 species of bromelias. This hanging garden, draping the jungle from top to bottom, provides the capuchins with a wide range of food. Their diet includes both small animals and all kinds of fruit and plants, and much between. This monkey will hunt for all kinds of invertebrates, including termites and ants, under the bark and among the leaves. The capuchins remain below an altitude of 2,000 meters and do not explore the upper reaches of the jungle. Higher up, in a region that is cloudier still than the monkey's kingdom, is the territory of vigorous giant oak trees. Their branches hang heavy with acorns, and many species of birds feast on the energy-giving fruits. And it is here, almost hidden in the mists, that birds of extraordinary colors and exceptional brightness may be seen. Resplendent Quetzals. 
The Quetzal's behavior is in sharp contrast to the agile capuchin's fleet-footedness. They're neither camouflaged nor do they attempt to hide. In fact, the iridescent green and crimson of their plumage is bright and showy, making them one of the most eye-catching animals in the jungle, stoically perching in the trees, observing the comings and goings around them. The Persea cairulea, a kind of avocado tree, provides a fundamental part of the diet of the Quetzal and many other birds in these forests, such as green toucanets. Their fleshy fruits, full of energy and vitamins, help those who eat them tolerate the low temperatures. The Quetzal's tiny feet can only be used for holding onto branches. They cannot even walk on the ground, and so they have to get their food whilst in motion. So Quetzals really do hunt the fruit they catch, pouncing on each one in full flight, as raptors might pluck a small animal from the air or a branch. Once you have captured your fruity meal, then comes the considerable effort of swallowing it. When the flesh of the fruit has been ingested, the Quetzals regurgitate the fruit's large stone. Quetzals, therefore, play a vital role in the dispersal of seeds, helping to spread the species of plant that feeds them. In the jungle of clouds, the game is hide or loudly announce your presence with boastful colors. Below the Quetzals, among the undergrowth, other no less splendidly brilliant creatures dart around, brightly colored and stunningly fast hummingbirds. Compared to the somewhat clumsy Quetzal, hummingbirds flit like flames. These small birds do not exclusively inhabit the cloudy forests, but they are particularly numerous here. They have evolved to become the sole proprietor of a very exotic niche, the jungle's hanging flowers. Certain hummingbirds and plants have developed alongside each other, forming symbiotic and highly beneficial relationships. The birds feed on the flowers' energy and nutrient-laden nectar, and in return, the birds then pollinate the flowers, ensuring their fertilization. Each species of hummingbird has evolved a differently shaped bill, according to the shape and size of the flowers which it feeds on. The metabolism of hummingbirds is extremely high, so some species that live in colder environments have evolved the ability to lower their body temperature when resting or sleeping so that they can conserve vital energy. cloud and mist cover that characterizes these woodlands affords them the so-called horizontal rain, a fine and continuous drizzle that ensures every corner of the jungle is wet. A large number of streams and rivers tumble down the slopes of the jungle. This moist environment is also popular with other animals, also dressed in startling colors, coral snakes. 
The striking combination of colors acts as a warning to others. This is one of the most poisonous snakes in the world, comparable with cobras and mambas. Coral snakes dwell in the jungle leaf litter, where they hunt other reptiles. In particular, they hunt other snakes, which they bite repeatedly to inject with a lethal dose of venom in order to immobilize their prey. But snakes have one drawback when hunting. They must swallow what they catch whole. This is a laborious task, especially when your meal is as long as you are yourself. But it's worth the effort. This meal will satisfy the snake for several weeks, the time it takes to digest it fully. In the lower regions of the cloudy jungle, where temperatures are higher, invertebrate activity is febrile. Leaf cutter ants defoliate all kinds of shrubs and trees. The transportation of their booty is non stop. These ants use the leaf matter to prepare a compost from which they can cultivate the fungi on which they feed. While the invertebrates of this rainforest engage in their frenzied activity, another animal takes things a little more calmly. The three-toed sloth. Despite their lack of speed, sloths have triumphed in this neotropical rainforest. They represent two-thirds of the biomass of terrestrial mammals in the region. This success is due to specialization. Their leaf-based diet avoids their having any competition for food, given that plants are in such abundance here. Sloths are exclusively leaf eaters, but this diet provides them with few nutrients so they must ingest a huge amount, which is stored in their capacious stomach. When full, the plant matter inside them may account for one-third of their body weight. Their digestion is so slow that it takes more than a month for one meal to be completely processed. The sloths are unconcerned by the rain. In fact, it's a positive advantage to them. 
it helps maintain the green coloration of their coat caused by the lichen that grows on it, their own particular kind of camouflage. The biodiversity of the interior of the cloud jungle is remarkable, concentrated in and around the trees. Jaguars know this well and patrol every corner of the jungle. Endemism is pronounced in these forests. For example, the Brazilian porcupine is a rodent that is exclusive to the jungles of Central America, including the cloud forest. The porcupine hides in the gaps between and under the trees, feeding on their leaves. It is well adapted to this arboreal world, possessing a prehensile tail similar to that of monkeys. Thanks to this versatile tail, the porcupine can even climb downwards head first without fear of falling on its head. Life in the cloud jungles of Costa Rica is played out against a continuous background murmur. One of the most recognizable sounds here pierces the air from the highest branches. White-throated toucans mark their territory with a characteristic call. Toucans are part of the unique wildlife of these New World jungles. A toucan's most familiar feature is its huge, colorful bill, which has several functions. It helps regulate body temperature, it is used for visual signals, and most importantly, it is an efficient tool for gathering food. allowing the birds to reach mature fruit in places where they cannot perch. It's just these fruits that are most sought after in the forest. The monkeys that inhabit this territory on the lower slopes of the cloudy jungle are also fond of the mature fruits. For most of the time, the forest remains enveloped in the mists, but there are occasional breaks in the cloud which allow its inhabitants to enjoy a few hours of sunlight.
But come rain or shine, the hungry jaguar does not stop its search for food. Silently, cautiously, it continues its patrol. Weighing more than a hundred kilos, this is the largest feline in the Americas. Its size and power allows it to hunt any of the animals it shares the continent with, from tapirs to monkeys. Its menu is known to consist of more than 80 different species of prey. The jaguar is a superbly agile creature, and no one is safe when the big cat of the jungle is on the prowl. It's an expert at ambushing its prey, an opportunist able to take advantage of the slightest loss of concentration exhibited by any of the species living in the cloudy jungle. This monkey has been unlucky. It let its guard down for a mere instant, a second perhaps, but the consequences have proved fatal. The law of the jungle may seem harsh, but without it, the amazing and complex network of life found in this region would not exist. The forest of clouds is a magical setting. The curtain of fog lifts and drops again many times a day, sometimes revealing its most tragic facets. At other times, showing a glimpse of the wealth, diversity and beauty of a unique world suspended between the mountains and the lowering sky itself. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a like and comment. Support legal content on YouTube.